Students, my name is Melissa Hudnall. I am a Youth Ed Programs Facilitator here at the Houston Museum of Natural Science. Um, and that just means I get to go out and teach kids and adults alike about all my favorite things. So I brought you some of my favorite things today, particularly arachnids and their closest relative. Um, so I love these guys because even if you're stuck at home, there's something that you can go looking for in your backyard with a grown-up. Um, if you do so, you can just wear the proper protective safety gear. If you turn things over, just keep a good distance between yourself and the rocks or logs that you may be flipping to find these really cool creatures. Um, arachnids come in all shapes and sizes. Uh, so everyone knows about the very famous Goliath bird eater tarantula. So this is a male specimen here. Uh, female would be even a little bit larger than this. Uh, and, and people do believe that they eat birds, but they don't. I think one was just caught doing it one time maybe, but these guys typically just eat small invertebrates as m the majority of their diet. Um, then you can also have tarantulas that are really tiny about the size of your thumbnail. So all shapes and sizes and all sorts of personalities as well. So this tarantula in this box right here is actually one of my favorites. It's really famous um, for being a very docile species. Let's see if she'll let me go ahead and grab her here. Good girl. Okay. So this is a Chilean rose hair tarantula, uh, and I just love her because they are so sweet and gentle. Uh, and this is a, around a full grown size. She can get a little bit larger than this. Um, and we'll go over some basic arachnid anatomy with this one here because everything's pretty easy to see on her. So she's got, unlike insects that have three major body segments, she has just two because she's an arachnid. So she has a cephalothorax, which is this front part right here, um, and all of her legs, we know they have eight legs, right? All of her legs and her eyes and her mouth parts would be on that front segment of her body. And then this bodacious area back here is her abdomen. So here she has her digestive parts um, and you'll see on the back end, the tiny little spinnerets that she can make that nice web with. And if we reach in her cage, we can actually pull up some dirt that she has stuck together using web. So she can use that web. She doesn't use it to catch her prey, but she can use it to kind of feel around her area and see if anybody's walking past where she's hanging out because they like to kind of dig down in the soil a bit and hide away from predators. Um, now, I'm holding her because she is not one of the more dangerous species of spiders. Uh, tarantulas typically don't have very strong venom for most species. So hers is roughly the strength of a bee sting. Um, now we're going to put her back, but before I put her back, I want to point out one special body part that people don't notice on arachnids. So we know that she has eight legs, but she also has, if you didn't know they had eight legs and you just had to count on your own, you would think they had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten legs. Because they have these two little appendages that look like legs but are not. They're called pedipalps. So if you look at the front here, this piece and this piece, those are pedipalps. And those kind of act like extensions of her mouth to help bring the prey towards her mouth. Uh, if they're a male, they also help in the mating process. And then her chelicerae right here, they're famous for their fangs, and that's what those fangs are attached to. Now I can show you what her fangs look like. She's a pretty good girl. So if you just kind of film between my hands here, you'll see those little fangs that she has. And even when I'm doing this with her, she's not using those fangs on me because I'm not her prey and she doesn't feel afraid of me. Uh, she typically here at the museum eats crickets. So she'll use those chelicerae to pump venom into her crickets and that will liquefy the inside of the crickets. Um, and then she can slurp them up, kind of like a cricket shake. So we're gonna put her back. Oh, I know, you just wanna hang out all day. Go ahead, go back. There we go. All right, so that's a Chilean rose hair tarantula. That's one you commonly see people holding. Um, if there's movies that have tarantulas in them, usually it's gonna be a Chilean rose hair or uh, something called a Mexican red knee because those are pretty popular as well. This tarantula in this box is a little bit different. You're gonna notice that my first tarantula was hanging out on the ground. My second tarantula, she hangs out up here at the very top of the box. So this is an arboreal species. 
It's called a Peruvian pink toe tarantula. You can see uh, a web hammock, the remnants of a web hammock that we kind of pulled away from her so that way you could see where she is at the top there. Uh, and what I love about her is that her defense mechanism is gonna be different than this tarantula over here. My first tarantula, if it feels threatened, it has these hairs called urticating bristles and they're itch causing hairs. And it can kick those hairs off and you'll breathe them in and then it makes your nasal passage really scratchy and very uncomfortable. Um, but this tarantula doesn't do that to, uh, to most specimens. What she does is even funnier, she flings poop and she is accurate up to two feet. So if you look at the walls of her enclosure, you can see where she got kind of annoyed with us and she flung some poop at us. And I have had a young spiderling hit me on the lip from about a foot and a half away. So I can testify that their aim is really good. So that's my spiders. Um, here in Texas, we do have other spiders that you've probably heard of. They're very famous uh, for being pretty venomous. And I do have those today. So of all the spiders in Texas, there's really just two or three species that you need to be aware of that could actually be potentially harmful. And none of them are tarantulas. Uh, this is a very famous spider called a black widow. And you may have heard of them because they have a particular pattern on their abdomen, that hourglass pattern. And I want you to notice that from the distance that you're at and with the lighting that you have, you can't see the hourglass. Uh, and typically when you come across these under your porch or in your garage, that hourglass is actually way harder to see than you would imagine because it's on their belly, they're hanging upside down, and you're seeing them from the side. So it's just not something that's very easy to see. So it's a good idea to know the general shape of the spider and the general size. If you see that, just leave it alone. Uh, or if you see any spider, just leave it alone. It's good to watch them and not touch them. I'm touching them because I have training with these guys today. Another one that you've probably heard of is very shy by nature and is named after that fact. It's called a brown recluse spider. And I'm really excited about this particular one because this one we actually hatched and raised at the museum. So this is one you're not likely to come across unless you're putting your hands or your feet in an area where you can't actually see where they're going. So if you go in your garage, start grabbing boxes without looking behind those boxes first. So just by following common safety procedures, you can avoid the most dangerous of our spiders here in Texas. Now this one is pretty famous for being very easy to spot at night. So this is a very tiny friend in here, and I'm gonna let you look in the cage first to see if you can find it. So go ahead, and take a good look. See if you notice my friend in there. And then I'm gonna shine a light in that cage, and we'll see if my friend shows up. There he is. That is a West Texas scorpion. This, oh, look at you walking around. This is actually brought back from our paleontologist here at the museum. They were digging up uh, Dimetrodon fossils. And of course, when you're digging through the ground, you come across centipedes, spiders, and scorpions. And they know to bring back some really good presents for me every time they go digging. So this one is actually not full grown. The story goes that mom was brought back with a friend and by the time the paleontologist made the five hour drive back, there was just one scorpion in the tank. And that's because she was pregnant and very hungry. So she ate her tank mate. So there's mom scurrying away from the light as she should be. And there's one of her babies that she had. So it was a surprise baby that we had here at the museum. So scorpions, they have eight legs. They have two body segments. They have venom to break down their prey, just like spiders do. And instead of having two appendages that look like small eggs, they have those big pedipalps, those big pinchers uh, towards the front of their body. You can see her pedipalps up there. Now, related to spiders and scorpions, we have another chelicerate. So chelicerata is the group of animals that has uh, no jaw. So they have to have an alternative way of eating their food. So for your spiders, you have venom to break their prey down and those pedipalps to hold their prey. For the scorpions, they have venom and pedipalps as well. And then for this animal, there's no venom, but it does have pedipalps. So what I have here, I know, Betty, I know, we'll make it short for you. What I have is a horseshoe crab. So 
This horseshoe crab has a similar body plan to our arachnids because it's very closely related. So we have the front segment, the cephalothorax, the back segment, the abdomen, and this little additional part is called the telson. And it doesn't hurt me, it's just there to help this horseshoe crab mimic a stingray. So you can kind of see it's got the same general body shape as a stingray. Now I'm gonna flip it over briefly so you can take a look at the underside. You'll see eight legs. Oh, there we go. You'll see eight legs and two pedipalps in the front. And so here we go. Here's our legs. And this is a pedipalp. We know it's a male because he's got this hook-like appendage. That's for grabbing onto the females. And in spiders, the chelicerae are attached to fangs. In scorpions, the chelicerae just look like a small pair of chopsticks. And when you look at the chelicerae of my horseshoe crab here, they look like a cute little tiny pair of chopsticks. Spiders have book lungs, so they look like pages of a book. And underneath these flaps here, this horseshoe crab has book gills. So they actually have quite a few things in common with each other. So those are all my favorite critters at the museum. I hope you learned a little bit and you have a little bit of appreciation for these guys that you could even find in your backyard. Have a good day.